Michelle. And Miss Ree. Back again for another series in our Foo Ventures. Hey, Eric. Hey, the alligator friend. is my friend. He, he could be yours too. I'd rather have him as my friend than wear him as a shoe. Well, I'd rather see him in the Okie Pinocchio than see him on TV. Yeah. They're <laughs> all around us. <laughs> that was cheesy. That was cheesy. All right, who's out there? Say hello. Give us a wave. Ask many questions. We are today with the American Alligators. Alligator Mississippiensis. Yeah. Michelle, since we're keeping six feet state, uh, safe, how old would the gator be that's in between us? How old do you think? Well, about a six foot gator is a mature alligator, and that would be about 10, 10 yeah. years old. Yeah. Hi, Theo. Hi, Cecilia. Say hi to mom and dad, grandma, grandpa, and Nolan for me. Thanks for joining oh. us. All right. Yeah, we're super excited to have you here. We're super bummed out that you can't be here with us at Oatland, but we're going to try to get uh, kind of a behind the scenes look. We do have our animal keepers that feed during guest hours, so some of you might have gotten to see the gators being fed before, um, but we're going to do that here for, with you today so you get to see that. Um, it's kind of a special experience to see how they interact with their food, their gator biscuits. Hi, Iris. Right Hi, Lanier. Thank you for joining us today. Appreciate everybody out there. Aw, Brooke and Grayson, how are you? And Donna, thanks for joining in today. Um, so we're with our mature, at least six feet long, probably longer, yeah. American alligators. This is uh, all boys in our exhibit, just to keep the fighting down and also to prevent any unnecessary nesting, because yeah. we don't want to have that as well. Yeah. Yeah. Um, we have a question coming in from one of you out there, um, and if you have the name of the person, you'd like that too. So they want to know, we'll figure out who it is, how long do they hibernate? Eric, hibernation in alligators? Heather. <laughs> Heather's asking, uh, um, not, this Heather. not this Heather. We have a, a our director Heather. Heather here with us, so that's kind of funny. Um, Mom, hi. And Heather, we um, have this really cool word for hibernation when it comes to um, cold-blooded animals or reptilians, and it's called brumation. And brumation is kind of like... Uh, a type of torpor they slow down their heart rate and their respiratory rate and they're going to kind of just hang out in an area where they have not too cold but not too hot and they're gonna wait out those lean times so torpor might happen during a drought it might happen during a cold snap um, torpor keeps them alive typically though that brumation doesn't last any longer than when we start getting those warm temps for them. So if it's getting to 65 degrees during the day, we've got a nice sunny day, they're gonna be coming out. So our gators will go into a torpor sometimes where we don't see them for three, four weeks, but if we get a sunny 70 degree day in January, they're gonna come out and get that sunlight and get warmed back up that way. Guess what I learned yesterday? Tell me! When I was researching all about the American alligator, I learned that the American crocodile which lives in the tip of Florida, not here in Georgia. Mm -hmm. um, when they they will go into brumation from a cold snap, and what they say is that they can go so deep into a brumation that they drown. Oh wow, that's amazing. so. That's why they're not moving their ranges north yeah. like the American alligator. Mm -hmm. Learns new stuff so all cool. the time. That's really so cool. yes, yeah, so we don't have that American crocodile here. We only have American alligators. So remember that. Theo and Cecilia, what do you think their favorite food is? If you live in the water and you like to hunt in the water more than you do on land, what can you find in the water to eat? What's your favorite, most accessible food? You guys know the answer out there? Anybody out there? Okay, I'll show I, you how you say it in a sign language. Oh yeah. And this is how I say alligator. Logan in North Carolina is checking in with us. Hello, Logan. Thanks for joining us. We can tell them what babies eat and maybe that'll help them out. A baby? Yeah, a baby alligator would eat little, 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 little tiny insects, maybe tadpoles, um, small invertebrates that are in the water, anything in a freshwater system. And then maybe, maybe if he's lucky, you'll get some shrimp and some crabs as well. So really, 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 uh, tiny wiggly things that he can latch onto and swallow in one big bite. They don't usually chew their food. Maisie and Kara, we're so, so happy that you're tuning in. We miss you guys. And two of our, our pre-K um, parent and para and 
student tuning in. Lucy, is this Lucy, like Bella and Lucy? She wants to know, do they climb trees? Um, I don't know if they climb trees, but they climb fences. That little guy will climb a tree. This little, little, guy, guy, little, guys, little guys will climb a tree. Not like up straight no. up or anything, but they'll like get through. I don't imagine them going very high. No, like so if you imagine like a river bank where the trees are hanging over, they'll climb up in those trees to get out of the water, away yeah. from predators, to get some sunlight. Um, but they're a big gator is not going to be climbing a tree. An adult gator. All right, I'm just checking the response because this baby is doing a stress call right now um, to a mom because I'm a scary predator. <laughs> Oh, sorry. Didn't mean to scare you, baby. But those are males back there. We'll see how much they care about a baby yeah. alligator. They probably want to eat it. So thumbs up if you can hear that sound. If you ever hear that and you're out playing in a creek or pond or swamp, don't stay around. Mom's a good mom, and she's going to come and chase you off. She'll come after you. You don't want to deal with that mama alligator. It is a very good mother. And reptiles, usually mothering isn't the most uh, professional <laughs> skill that they have. Um, so for an alligator to be a really good mother, it's an interesting fact. It's a really fun fact about alligators. Is that my friend Mora typing in? Ooh. Ooh. Mora and Trish and Ian. Mora wants to know, why do they have teeth if they don't chew? Excellent question. Great question. Yeah, my grandpa didn't have any teeth, and he didn't. He would get baby food. All right. Hi, Leslie Mailer. Dr. Mailer's on. Um, well, let's see. Um, alligators have different purpose for their teeth, yeah. and it's not. It's kind of like what dogs do too. It's for grabbing and holding and tearing. Mm -hmm. So when they grab a big animal, they're gonna grab it. Just, what are they gonna do? You guys can do it at home. Yeah, to do the head shake, like Mr. E just did. Shake your head, back and forth, kind of tear that meat, rip it off, rip it off. And then they throw it down. You need a hole. Pretty awesome to see that. And then everyone wants to talk about the death roll, right? Um, that's a tearing met, uh, adaptation. Torque, yeah. So they want to so twist it and break twisting, it off yeah. into pieces. What do you have in your hand, Mr. E? Yeah, so it's going to show you guys. These are two um, locally found teeth. Um, so we have here on your guys's, let's see if I get this right, right, a fossilized tooth. And that is a representative of an alligator or a crocodilian that lived, you know, millions of years ago. And then we have a modern tooth. And you can see both of them have this little conical hole in the bottom. And if you find a, a tooth on the beach, that's probably going to be from an alligator. They're very um, typical of that hole or that cone shape in the bottom. And these teeth, like Michelle said, aren't for necessarily gripping or, or um, holding. They're for crushing and then ripping with their body. So they'll turn their head and as they roll, they'll tear off chunks or they'll shake their head and pull off chunks. But there's a lot of bite force on the end of those teeth. How much bite force, Mr. E? So at least 2,000 pounds. At least 2,000 pounds. What? 2,000 pounds? That's almost a ton yeah. of force per square inch. So do not get your hand in the way of an alligator's mouth or any part yeah. of your body. Yeah. It's easy to do because alligators are predictable. Mm -hmm. You should never have an encounter with an alligator because when they come up hunting, I don't know if you can see our guy in our big pond here, you can see them. You can see their head, you can see their tail. This little guy is super, super. He likes yeah. the warm weather. Local. It's active and vocal. Um, so when they're sneaking up on you, if you see them and they see you, don't hang around there. That means that alligator has lost fear of humans. If you see an alligator and he disappears, that's typically a sign that he's afraid of you and he is going away. So remember, all you have to do is give him the two second look test. And then if it sees you and you're hanging on the edge, you need to leave. You need to, you don't have to run, just don't fish, don't hang out there, go somewhere else. Give that alligator that territory. Yeah. Lucy wants to know how fast are they on land? Yeah, so they are really fast, very fast. Um, faster than a human, that's all you need to know, right? Give them space um, and you don't have to worry about it. We think that in a, in a sprint on land for a very short distance, they can go in about 25, 25 miles per hour. So it's about as fast as a car goes in a residential neighborhood. 
Um, they can only do that for a short amount of time and they will not chase prey up onto land. They want to be on the water's edge or in the water itself. That's their superpower. Yeah. Being in the water is yeah. where they feel they're the strongest because they know that a lot of their prey are air breathers, yeah. except for fish. And they want you in the water where you can't breathe. It helps them with the fight a little bit and they hold you underwater with their force and their strength. Yeah. So you shouldn't have a problem, right? You see them, you give them a two second look test. You don't need to be chased by an alligator. You just move away. Yeah, humans actually do amazing things when we swim um, to mimic an alligator almost. We put flippers on our hands and our feet so that we can swim faster. We put ear plugs and nose plugs in so water doesn't get in. We put goggles on like they have to protect their eyes underwater so you can see underwater. Same thumbs up if you can see their, yeah, their little, goggle. Little goggle that goes across called the nictating membrane, nictating membrane. And that crosses, it's their kind of third eyelid, um, or second eyelid, I don't know why I said oh, third. Um, the really, really cool thing that they have that's also super, super amazing is they have the ability to have um, this really super amazing heart. And so they pump really oxygenated blood around their system well, and they can shunt off areas of their body. So just like a scuba diver would put an oxygen tank on their back to carry oxygen underwater with them, they do the same thing too. They'll carry that oxygen, highly oxygenated blood with their very efficient heart and move it around their body, and they, that allows them to hold their breath for a very, very long time. An actively hunting alligator can hold its breath for like 12, 15 minutes. So super, super amazing. When an alligator is cool, maybe going into a torpor, they can hold their breath for six hours. It's a really, really amazing ability to stay underwater and stay safe. All right, I just wanted you guys to see, this is kind of a fun thing, that the ears, the ear slits. Can mm -hmm. you see that back there? Thumbs up if you can see it on the screen. A little hole opening behind the eyeball. Alligators have really good sensory perception. Good eyesight, hearing, um, they're vocal, they talk a lot to each other. Mm -hmm. This is a baby talk, but the, they get older, they make grunts and grumbles and Bellows. bellowing and uh, they they do water talk. They feel they talk through vibrations through the waters. Um, alligators are super cool animals for sure. Yeah, the sounds that they make are actually so low that humans can't hear them. They're actually um, really, really detectable through water. They can detect those vibrations, but actually we can't hear them. Eric, Ava wants to know what are you throwing at them? So these are our biscuits, little croc, croc chow. We call them croc chow. Um, gator chow, but it's a biscuit that has basically all the nutrients that they need and all the protein that they need. It's got some vitamins added in there um, they get, so they get the right amino acids so they can grow and stay healthy. Um, and then this is substituted with other um, enrichment items and then also live, or not live, but fish, whole fish. So really cool kind of ground up diet for them. All right, Maisie asked when we feed them. It depends on the time of year. Right in the winter time, when they're going through brumation, they're not going to be interested in eating at all. Maybe sometimes for like a month or two straight. So um, during this time of year, spring, they start warming up. They're going to feed them three times a week, and that's um, what we feed them. And then they also catch food in their exhibit as well. So um, fish and crabs and whatever else comes in. Annabelle, to nice that. to see you. Thanks for tuning in. Hi, We've seen you a bunch on these streams, Yay. so we're so happy that you're following us. All right, Diana, Diana Graham, do you want to know how old this baby is? This little baby here is a yearling. So it was hatched in summer, maybe last summer, going on to a year now. Um, and he's almost doubled his length since he's hatched. So when he hatches out, he's from South Carolina, from a, a gator center, I'm not exactly sure the yeah. name of it, um, and he comes to us as a, as a hatchling, and we raise him up as, as big as our exhibit, our tanks will carry them, and then they want them back, so they're kind of on loan to us from the center, and he, when he was hatched, he came out of a nest. Now, I have a question for you guys. Ooh. Where does an alligator build their nest? Mm, good question. Do they build it in the water, mm. under the water? In a tree? In a tree. Or outside of the water on the high ground. Put your guesses in. So the female, she's going to build, I've heard she build, builds several nests. She'll mm -hmm. try different ones. And depending on how successful she was, 
the mound will start to decompose and give off heat. And so she kind of checks and monitors that. And she sees what temperature that the egg, before she drops the eggs in, and she can help, she can help determine the sex of her babies. Yeah. By sensing the temperature. That's something also I just learned recently. Yeah. So, um, what does that mean, Eric? Alligator Adventures, Myrtle Beach. That's where that's where those little babies went. Oh, thanks. Is that from Dr. Mailer? No, that's from Tim. Oh, that's Tim from Tim. Tim picked them up. Oh, yeah, Tim went there. Tim uh, is there here. He's our educator, Tim Cornish. Lastly, <laughs> oh, ask, is it okay to feed the alligators in the ponds near our houses? <laughs> no. Rule number one, yeah. never feed alligators. Because remember how I said you give them a two second look and if they're afraid of you, that's good. As soon as you start feeding an alligator, they stop being afraid of you. So we don't want to make alligators acclimated, comfortable around us. We want them to fear us and give us our distance. So the first thing you do when you feed them is say, hey, I'm helping you out. Yeah. I'm making your life easier and better. Yeah. You like me being around. So please, please, please don't feed an alligator. And if you see a friend doing the same thing, you can try not to be the Lorax and, and scream and yell. Yeah. But you can give them some nice education about it and about how alligators are so important. We want them around. We want them in our swamps. Yeah. Our alligators behind us are here because they were gators that were fed in a neighborhood pond and they became uh, used to humans and they would approach humans for food and that's a really dangerous thing um, they lose their natural fear like miss michelle said so that's why they're here the other fate that they have if they are trapped or removed from a pond is that they're destroyed they're killed so really really if you want to be nice to a gator and love on a gator you can watch them from a distance take some photos from a distance but never feed a gator we have some answers coming in um, yeah who like wanted to know where they nest so we oh. have um stella and iris have it it's next to water on high ground yeah very good don't want to be too far away from water and remember she builds up with leaves and hay and grass and sticks and she is all about decomposition she wants that mound to start heating up because why can't she do it why can't she sit on them like a bird anybody know the answer to that about alligators why are they unable to incubate their eggs mm. think about it Type in your answers if you want, if you know the answer. Mm -hmm. Judah, Ellis, and Ansley wants to know if they have any names. I don't You name can name them. them if you want. I don't have names. Yeah. I mean, we had tripod. That's not what I know. The baby doesn't have a name, though. The baby does not have a name. We have two of them. We get them so often that sometimes the naming comes later. We yeah. just have to we'll wait for their personality to show up. All right, Lisa Ann's coming in. Lisa Ann, good job. You got it. They're cold-blooded. Yeah. So her body temperature, she is going to be the same temperature as the air, and so she can't always incubate the eggs, right? If it's not a nice warm day. So she's gonna let the decomposition of her nest material do that for her. It's pretty cool. Yeah. And alligators, the temperature of um, the high spectrum is the male, mm -hmm. and the low spectrum is the female, but in the turtle world, it's opposite, mostly. Cheryl in Pennsylvania. Cheryl calling in from Pennsylvania. Hi, Not calling Cheryl. in. <laughs> Commenting in. Commenting in. Yeah, so we have uh, North Carolina and we have Pennsylvania. Anybody else out there from another state? My mom was in Illinois. Away? Mom's in Illinois. All right. Um, it's really interesting, too. We don't talk about this a lot, but if you think about where eggs are laid, birds. They give incubation on the bottom with their nest and then their body covers the top. And that's why when we have an alligator, it's a big dome. So it gets covered and incubated all the way around because the egg needs heat on all sides. So it's really important to remember too, that that's why a sea turtle comes up on the beach and lays their eggs in the warm sand, but high enough that the water never comes up to them because the eggs are permeable, water could get in and the babies could drown. So you always want your eggs up high and dry. Yeah. 35 to 50 babies in a nest at a time. Yeah. That's a lot of brothers and sisters. Mm -hmm. But not all of them are going to make it because at this age, this little guy, he is prey as well as a predator. So um, you notice that he has his camouflage. He has his striping. He's going to look like the grass and the shadows coming through the grass. And he's whitish on the belly. So when you look up from under the water, you don't see him. And when you look down from the air, you don't see him. 
As it gets older, they're gonna lose that striping, that camouflage. Okay, Kirsten oh, yeah, in Florida. My, Hello, my, Kirsten. My sis and my niece, or Ava, are tuning in from Iowa, so that's oh, super cool. Ava. Hi, Ava. I love watching your videos. I watch them. Yeah, I show them as the show. <laughs> Logan wants to know if the alligators have water to live in. The baby, I'm guessing, is yeah. what we're saying, right? Yeah. Yes, and yeah, we took them out of the water to bring them to the show. Especially, he does not live out here. Remember we talked about predators? Yeah. Sometimes alligators are predators of alligators. Okay? Predators and prey. Yes, it's true. Yeah. So moms are super protective. Yeah, so gators always need a source of water. That's where their prey is. They don't want to be out on land. It's hard to thermoregulate, keep your temperature the right if you don't have a cool place to go in the, in the, in the summer, in the hot heat. And if in a warm water place when it's nice and cool in the air, um, they want to have water. So what they do is they are architects of their environment. So they'll actually go out and build these really, really amazing holes in swamps or freshwater areas that are deep. So when their drought happens, there's always a nice place for them to go that has water. And this is really, really important because in a drought, we all know as the water evaporates and goes away, those animals in the swamp that's already shallow water would lose their home. But if they have a deep, deep hole where the alligator is, they can actually go down in there and survive. And the gator gets a little extra food, but most of them survive. And then when the rains come, they can move back out again. Why we have Lisa Ann from Washington State. That's awesome. Woo! Good job. Thanks for joining us today. Okay, Don asks a good question. She wants to know, are they more active at day or night? Yes. <laughs> temperature yeah temperature is huge so in the summertime when it's really hot and all of us don't like the sweltering heat neither do the alligators so they're just gonna be a little bit more um, lethargic and just lay around um, when it starts so they might come out more at night in the summertime and in the um, winter time they're gonna be taking advantage of that Sun that solar radiation so that they can thermal regulate so they, they switch around a lot but if you want to see breeding or if you want to see that kind of behavior, I would say nighttime, a lot mm -hmm. of that happens. Yeah. So. And they have a really cool um, membrane in the back of their eye that allows them to see pretty well at night. And it's kind of like what a cat has. And if you shine a light at a cat at night, you might see those glowing eyes. Gators have that too. So you can actually shine the light out into a swamp and just see all of the different sets of eyes um, at nighttime. It's a really cool way to find them. Um, keep your distance still, but still know that there's lots of gators out there. Nice. So you guys are asking some really good questions. And thank you guys for joining our live edition of Food Ventures. We are real time here, so send us your questions. Say hello. Um, tell us what you need to tell us about your experience with alligators. Um, we'll love to hear that too. Allie asks, how big do they grow? Yeah. Ooh, that's yeah. a good question. And, Air specializes yeah. in, in facts. Yeah, in an ideal environment, a baby gator like that can grow a foot a year up until they're about seven or eight years old. Once they get to be at seven or eight years old, seven, eight feet long, they slow their growth rate down. So basically what happens is maybe an older gator died away and they took over their habitat. They're gonna grow as fast as they can so they can take over that territory and then they're gonna grow slowly for the rest of their life. Gators, like we talked about earlier with our snakes, they have indeterminate growth, meaning that they're gonna grow their whole entire life. So they're gonna grow and grow and grow and grow and grow. Lots of records out there that are constantly being broken as we have more scientific ways of measuring and weighing the, the gators that are harvested through legal hunting, which is legal in the state of Georgia. And so the state record for Georgia is around 15 feet right now. Um, and they can get larger than that, and there are larger records in other states um, throughout the southeast. There's anecdotal stories from Civil War times about 20 foot long gators, if you want to believe that. But we like to say that we have kind of a, a range of full grown gators that's anywhere from 8 to 10 feet, with larger males getting into the teens, the low teens. Yeah, it's a pretty big animal. Yeah. Stacy wants to know, do they transfer salmonella if you handle them? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. why I get an itch on my face and I'm like, ah, no, get don't touch, face. don't touch. Because I get like flies, sometimes gnats. Um, but yeah, they can naturally carry salmonella on their skin 
And so that's why when we touch them in our programs, we're real strict about not putting your hands in your eyes, nose, ears, or mouth, and to sanitize or wash your hands thoroughly after handling. But that's kind of our mantra in life these days, right? Sanitize, clean your hands, wash your hands, stay safe around people. Um, so we're pretty good practice with that right now. Um, all right, this little baby. Eric, how could you tell that this wasn't a baby caiman if you were in Florida? Oh, that's a good question. So um, gators are um, kind of like uh, the most uh, snub nose of our crocodilian. So if you look at their, their nose, it's more rounded like a shovel. And if you ever dug a hole with a shovel, you can see how round and blunt it is. That's what their head looks like. Whereas a caiman and all of our other crocodilians, um, gharials, they, they have a really long snout that's kind of more like a, a long width and not nearly as wide as their actual head. Whereas if you have a really, really strong um, taper to a tight taper for your crocodilians, these guys are more gradual taper and rounded. The other thing is that they're usually a little bit more big. They kind of got um, a stockier body. They're not quite as long, and they have less pronounced scoots on their back as well. Typically, not always, but typically, so they don't have as pointy as scoots on their back. And they, they also, but they do have more um, scoots on their neck yes. area right yeah. here yeah. than the alligator does. So the alligator, you can see the neck scoots back here. That's one one um, identifier. So look at the scoots. We call them scoots. What is a scoot, Mr. E? Tell us about a scoot. Let's move out of the camera and I'll show them. Okay. <laughs> so scoots are basically these really, really cool modified scales. Um, and these modified scales in their backs are sometimes called osteoderms as well because they're actually made out of bone. So um, like before on your guys' uh, right, we have a fossilized osteoderm from a crocodilian that lived millions of years ago and we have a modern crocodilian. Um, this is actually an alligator scoot as well. So very, very similar morphology. They look almost exactly the same because they haven't changed basically in that amount of time. So really, really cool for protection and all still for thermal regulation. And we'll talk about that. I'm gonna go set them down. Yeah, so those are the scoots, the bumps. Yeah, so if you notice like thermal regulations of changing your body temperature, super important for them. So they have this built-in ability to move their body so that the surface area of their back is catching the most amount of light possible. So their scoots are pyramid shaped, are kind of a ridge, and that can be catching as much light as possible and they can turn their body so they grab that light and warm their body up quicker. So it's a way to have the same amount of body shape but also more surface area so they can warm up quicker, give them a competitive advantage and say against dinosaurs and other common lizards. So um, that's why they think, scientists think that they lasted a little bit longer than most of our dinosaurs during those really hard times like those meteor strikes that we had that killed off all our dinosaurs. Um, Nappy wants to know, is their color of their skin any of any importance? Mm, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So they're big time camouflagers and that camouflage when they're young breaks up their shape, allows them to get in those areas where the light is moving through grass or reeds or sticks and breaking up that shape into shadow and light and that allows them to blend in. They're very good camouflage. As they get larger, they basically move off of the menu. The only predator they really have are humans and so they don't really need to worry about camouflage so they kind of turn to that um, brownish, olive, green color. Um, we don't have green gators anywhere. Only in cartoons. Only in cartoons. Green gators. Um, in your coloring books. Well, came, like came. It's like one time I saw alligators. an alligator covered in algae. Oh yeah. So you can get you can get like a cover of like uh, um, this time of year. Red. We have red in the oh, in the um, yeah. This what is the sand hill? Yeah. Island. Oh, yeah. Rural, when rural you, island drive. Yeah. When you get into areas where they have that red clay after they come out of torpor, they can be reddish brown and tan because they've got that mud covering them. They can also be green from all of the pollen. We've seen that before, <laughs> yellowish green from all the pollen. But uh, the true coloration of a gator is not green. We, I think that um, uh, Animal Crackers did that for us. You know, Animal Crackers have been around so long and they colored it green on the box. And probably, they've been green ever since. Probably Pogo from the O'Keefe and yeah, Swamp yeah, yeah. also did that. Um, so we, really importantly, Eric was talking a little bit about um, that they're architects of their environment. I want to talk a little bit about that. I want to ask you a question. 
Um, so you can see the gator pole, the gator pond, right out here. Um, those, there's four or three. There's four in the exhibit. There used to be four alligators. Mm, any coincidence? You decide. Um, that first one is really deep. I know that we took a, a bucket and we dropped the bucket loader down to see how deep it was, and it was over the bucket loader deep, so it was over six feet deep. And we didn't dig it out. So how does an alligator dig? You guys know? Mm. What are they using? How are they doing it? If you've seen them do it, if you know what they're doing, if you want to sh do it yourself, oh yeah, take a video. Send it to us. We'd love to see your alligator dance. Yeah. So alligators, how do they dig a hole? Get Anybody a, know out there? Get a backhoe, probably. Do they really use their little paws? The little diggers? You think that's a digging hand? They're compound sentences too, aren't they? Yeah, they are. No, those don't look like they would be good adaptations for digging. So if they're not using their paws or their feet, well, they could use them like like flippers. I've seen them do that. Yeah. They like use the water to slosh it around, lay on their belly, and just flip their feet back and forth. But anybody know out there? Is there any answers coming in? What part of their body do they do? They dig with Allie wants to say they dig with their noses. Yeah. Um, well, yeah. the nose a little bit. Just sure, they shovel, could do that. Maybe. This maybe like jawbone that. is really oh, good, cool, strong, yeah. big bone to dig with. So they use their face. They definitely use their face. Mm -hmm. And what else? What else do they use to dig a hole? Um, Scott got a tail. Yeah. Lori claws. Look at these little claws. <laughs> Probably not They got pretty so wimp, wimpy claws. Maybe a little bit. Plus they got a really big heavy body. And if they're on the land, I've seen them do it right here in the front where they're trying to dig out. They're going to like use the weight on the ground and they're going to do the Tail swish. Yeah. Swish Alligator it this way, wiggle. swish it that way, and you get it going, and then all of a sudden your whole body's doing the alligator dance. And then you do the gator dance and you turn yourself around, and now you got a round pond. That was really bad. That was really bad, yeah. <laughs> really bad. And you guys have done this too. We we almost bet that everyone watching right now has done this before. And when you've done it is in the bathtub. So if you've ever sloshed water in the bathtub, you know how the water moves around, makes waves. Those waves are used to carry that sediment out of their hole as they wiggle and wiggle and wiggle and wiggle. So really cool the way that they dig those holes with their body and their tail to make a really safe environment for them that has plenty of food when they have natural disasters like drought. Are alligators like dinosaurs? Um, Alligators are as old or even older than dinosaurs actually and they're like dinosaurs in that they have similar characteristics to a common ancestor um, that was like a basically a proto lizard before we had lizards so kind of interesting how dinosaurs kind of branched off and then we've got alligators and then we've got lizards branching off of that so they're like a dinosaur in that they're from that time period and they're like a dinosaur in that they've been around a long time, but they're still alive. They didn't go extinct like our dinosaurs did. So um, their shape of this gator back behind us hasn't changed in about a million years. So there were alligators a million years ago that looked almost identical to these ones. Yeah, and we, we talked a little bit about um, their similarities to birds. Yeah. And um, there is a common ancestor mm -hmm. that split into the alligator yeah, world and the bird, bird world. Bird world. Mm -hmm. And so besides the uh, characteristics of um, nesting and um, like a bird, uh, anybody else know any other characteristics they have that make them very bird-like? When we say avian? Hi Athena, thank Athena. you for tuning in. Anybody know? Mm, avian. Mm, they taste like chicken. They do. Yeah. But I don't know if that has anything to do with it. White meat. <laughs> uh, the other white meat. The other white meat. The tail part is what people usually eat. Um, not you can't go catch your own alligator though. You yeah. have to get them farm raised. Yeah. Um, uh, in, or in Georgia, you win can the get lottery a and hunt. Hunting permit through a lottery. They allow about a thousand permits a year in the state of Georgia, and then outside of that, about maybe 400 to 500 are harvested by trappers that remove nuisance gators. So those gators that die unnecessarily because they've been fed by humans. So pretty sad on that end. Yeah, and so the other characteristics real quickly is they have a heart, like a four chambered heart, like, like mammals and birds. And um, they also have, um, 
they have a chirp like a bird. Mm -hmm. They count the babies. Mm -hmm. And they have that maternal instinct like birds. So a lot of things are play, make them more similar to birds than lizards or definitely snakes mm -hmm. and turtles. Yeah, they have that really cool membrane on their arms. Oh, yeah, their nictitating membrane. Melissa asks, have our gators ever gotten sick? Yeah, yeah. Do we want to talk about um, what one ate? <laughs> so, um, through the, the negligence of possibly a guest, possibly a beachgoer, um, there was a flip-flop once in enclosure, and um, it ended up in one of their bellies, so that's a, a tummy ache for sure, and that was removed um, by our veterinary staff. Um, shout out to Dr. Mailer, she was tuning in earlier. Um, they've also had um, things that make them sick like little infections, and they're given a special diet to help boost their immunity to those sort of things. Um, and then we've also had gators that, you know, end up with a cough or a cold too, um, and that, those things are treated as well. So, you know, just like humans get sick, animals get sick, and we treat them, and we monitor how much they're eating for that um, ability to do that. So how they're eating, how much they're moving, how active they are is something we're always monitoring, and that animal care keeps a really good track of. And y'all should send out your hearts right now to our veterinarian because yeah. working on an animal like this is she's putting yeah. her life at risk <laughs> a few times to help our animals here at Oakland. So we want to give as much love to her as possible. So send out your loves for Dr. Mailer and our animal keepers. Thank you so much. Um, all right, we got some crop chow for the two. There's one way in the back. He's gonna get some chow later. We'll make sure he gets some. I don't know if you can see. Way back there, you can't. It's moving closer though. Getting yeah. closer to the sunlight. Yeah. Lots of hearts out there. We thank you guys so much for that. We're really hopeful that through this, you guys can be advocates and educators as well. And if you do see someone throwing in their their clean fish at the boat ramp after they came out of their boat, and there's a gator right there. Ask him maybe to dispose of that in a different way so that gator doesn't come up to the boat ramp and think it's a free handout time and scare a bunch of people and become a nuisance gator as well. Yeah. All right. So what, um, next Wednesday is our next edition of Food Ventures, and we want to hear from you and ask what uh, animal would you like to visit and learn about. Um, we're happy to accommodate as much as possible. Um, but as we, before we part, um, Eric's got a cool model here just to show you. Yeah, this is from a company called Bone Clone. So this is actually not a real skull. It's actually made out of a polymer or plastic. And you can kind of see their teeth and how their teeth work. Um, when a gator closes its mouth, this is another way to tell it from a crocodile, you only see a few teeth outside of their smile. So they have a few teeth outside of their smile when they close their mouth. Whereas when a crocodile closes their mouth, they have very toothy grin. And the other way, you tell the difference between an alligator with a crocodile is? Depends on if he sees you later or after a while. Oh, uh, that's, that's, that's my favorite joke. Hi, favorite. Kathy from Canada. You are the farthest away so far. <laughs> so far. Yeah, so alligator um, skulls have been like this for centuries. They have really big hinges so they can crush their food, grab on, hold tight, and then those nostrils that are on the top of their head like a snorkel so that they can grab air just by putting their nose out of the water and then go back down. So really cool adaptations on their whole entire body, but their skull has a lot. Those ears that come and feed uh, sound into their brain, which is right here and about the size of a walnut when they're full grown. So don't get mad at a gator if a gator approaches you. The reason for that is that he's either been trained by a human you got a little small brain, you got a much bigger brain, or there may be a mama protecting their young. So if you see a young baby alligator, give it space. Just because it's small doesn't mean it's not dangerous. <laughs> and, and we don't want to tattle on them all the time and get them in trouble because um, when they do, like Mr. E said, sometimes they get destroyed and we don't want them to get destroyed because our swamp habitats are uh, really dependent on having alligators for biodiversity. The more alligators in the swamp, the more ponds there are gonna be, gator holes, the more wildlife can be accommodated when there's a drought, when there's a shortage of rainfall, there's no water. The gator hole always has water in it. So if you're a turtle, a frog, a fish, a, a dragonfly, you are so grateful that alligators are in the swamp. So let's be kind to some alligators. 
thumbs up if you're gonna help us by keeping the alligators wild, not feeding them, giving them their space, give them a two second look. And um, we're gonna replay videos, uh, animal oh, videos yeah. on Oakland's YouTube channel. Yeah, check and, it out. Um, also coming up soon, we might have a video of a new exhibit opening. Yeah, yeah, our new, uh, our new exhibit. That's a, get, a hint, you have to guess which <laughs> animal is getting a new exhibit. But uh, thanks for joining us today. Remember to like us, follow us, share us. Matthew, what? We got calling for Germany. Germany! What? Oh, Germany's in the house. Yeah, that's awesome. Be hi, Sue. That's so, so cool. Yeah. Um, last but not least, kind of our keyword for the day, something for you to research on your own is biodiversity. Vocab word of the day, biodiversity. The presence of alligators in a swamp increases the biodiversity of that habitat. So look up biodiversity and research that, everybody. We live with alligators! Yeah, I know. We can live with them and they can be an Your amazing friend too. Yeah, yeah. And I'd rather see him nice and spelt yeah. than wear him as my belt. No. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that was ridiculous. All right, bye, friends. Okay, bye, Thank guys. You. Be safe. Be safe.